Hey guys, what's going on? This video is going to be a quick demo of my new product Vintone for those who want to get to using it right off the bat. But keep in mind that I do have a full length tutorial on this product if you really want to get the most out of it. But otherwise, let's begin. So I'm going to be walking you through the sample file here, which is included in the download for the product. And this just has a few designs that I made using Vintone so that you can kind of peek around and see how it's made um, and get a feel for how the product is used and the workflow that you can adopt with Vintone. So the framework is a three-step process. You composite your artwork and you choose the dither pattern that you want to dither with. For this one, I chose halftone, but you can choose any of the dither patterns that I provide for you, which I'll display in just a second. And then you color your artwork. So super simple process, but the template can get a little confusing, especially at first glance. So I want to explain a little bit. Um, about how it's laid out. So we have our three groups here for the three steps. We have our artwork composite, we have the dither pattern that you can choose, and then we have the coloring of that graphic. So let's begin with the first step of that process, which is compositing our artwork. And to show that a little bit better, I'm gonna turn the colors off for this. Then I'll go into the artwork composite folder here. And here you'll see we have the artwork and then two folders inside of here, which is the processing and the actual composite for the artwork. So the processing is what's actually going to dither your artwork. So you see when I turn this group off, this is our artwork that we composited or that I composited um, without the dithering effect going on. And when I turn it on, obviously we get that back. And the effect that is happening, the halftone dithering that's going on here is actually a live effect. So when I open up this composite and I go into the Fleetwood Mac example, which is all these images that I you know, smashed together, this is a pretty normal or typical composite I have all my images here that I, I sort of mask some of them out and then, you know, move them around. So we have Stevie Nicks here and then the logo up here and then this backing graphic of Fleetwood Mac playing live. So pretty simple stuff. But what you may have noticed is that the dithering effect going on here, the halftone is actually completely live. And that is one of the main attractions about Vintone. It's one of the coolest things about it, I think, is that when you're compositing your artwork, you have this dither effect going on right above it and that's completely live. So you'll see if I start to move Stevie Nicks around here, that she's getting dithered by that halftone pattern live. And if I were to take, let's say a soft brush and paint in here, this gets dithered with that halftone pattern live. So everything you put under the processing, everything you put under or in the composite folder is getting dithered by your dither pattern of choice completely live. And that makes compositing so easy because this is quite a high contrast effect. You'll see when I turn the processing off, that we get a lot more detail in here that we didn't have when the processing was on. Of course the color, but beyond that, there's just a lot of stuff going on here that you can't see in the dithered composite. And since it's being dithered live when you're compositing, it just makes it easy to see what it's actually going to look like once it's dithered because it is being dithered, of course, live. So with that being said, there's of course, you know, a lot that you just don't have to worry about now when you're compositing because a lot of the mistakes you'll make and, and small details that you don't want in your composite when there's no processing on top of it, kind of get really obscured and darkened by this processing, this live dither effect. Of course, because like I said, it is such a high contrast effect that details like how bad of a fade this is down here and how sloppy of a layer mask I did on this kind of get really obscured in the process and it ends up looking just fine with the dither pattern on top of it. So yeah, it just makes it really easy to composite because there's a lot less to worry about. So to recap, your first step is to composite your artwork in here. So you'll go into the composite folder of the template and you'll just start dragging your images in and blending them with one another. So you can see I did some layer masks here and faded some stuff out and then, you know, just put it all together to make a decent composition. And I go into some more techniques in this in the actual full length tutorial. So definitely give that a watch. But I'm just going to breeze kind of through this so you can see how the template actually works. So once you have your artwork composited down here, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and choose your desired dither pattern. And by the way, just a quick note, I kind of color coded things here. So this, when, when the layer is red, it basically means don't fuck with it. Don't touch it because you might mess with how the template operates. Um, and when it's green, that's something you're obviously gonna to wanna to play with. So this choose dither pattern here is something you're gonna to wanna to mess around with and find a dither pattern that works for you and your graphic or whatever your preferences are. So right now, and by default, it is set to this lightly distressed halftone but we actually have a ton of dither options for us to choose from. So let's go ahead and open up this smart object to choose our dither pattern. So we're gonna double click on the layer thumbnail there and you'll see that we get sent into this document which has our dither patterns. 
So by default, like I said, it is set to this lightly distressed halftone. But of course, we have other options such as a clean halftone. We have a medium distressed halftone and a heavy distressed halftone. So we have tons of halftone options for you to choose from. And aside from that, we also have the grain options or, or stochastic halftone. And this is what gets you that kind of really cool Xerox grainy look on your designs. So this is a classic, you know, we have the, the small grain, medium grain, and then a large grain. And then we also have some wild cards that I threw in here. So we have this diffusion look, which I'll make a little bit bigger because it's hard to see. But this is basically like a kind of bitmapped diffusion dither look. Just has a little bit more of an organic feel, which I'm going to use this pattern actually and show you what it looks like. It's really cool stuff. And then we have some wild cards in here, like the um, a diamond grain pattern that I created that I thought just kind of looked cool with or as a dither pattern on our graphic. So I'll show you this as well. And then we have this kind of vertical grain cotton weave like noise here that we can also use on our graphic for a really cool effect. And I'll show you all these in just a second. I want to display what the diffusion pattern looks like because that's one of my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and save our smart object with the diffusion pattern set as the pattern. So I'll press command S here and that is going to commit these changes to our template file. So when we go back to our event tone template, once this saves, see that this is now dithered using the dither pattern that we just chose, which is the diffusion dither pattern. Really cool, organic feel to this. Sort of has that grainy Xerox feel, but it's a little bit of a different pattern. Of course, you could see that here, how it differs from something like a stochastic grain or something like that. I mean, this is one of my favorite patterns to use. I really love it. Now I want to show you what something like the grain would look like. I also really love the grain, of course, that's a classic. So I'll go ahead and choose this small grain right here. I'll save my file and then that'll commit the changes to our template. So when I go back in here, you can see that our graphic is now dithered using that grain pattern. And this is really cool. It's like a completely different look for our graphic. And all I did was simply change the dither pattern. And of course, there's going to be some, you know, differences between the patterns and how they affect our graphic. So as we can see, this is a little bit darker and that's just something you're gonna have to make up for in your artwork composite. So I already did that when I made the composite. I have this adjustments folder here, which if I turn it to full opacity, you can see it kind of makes up for the loss in brightness that we have from changing our dither pattern to grain. So that's just something you'll have to be wary of when you're changing between the dither patterns. But yeah, really love this effect. It's a classic kind of like Xerox grain look. And of course there's multiple grain sizes for you to choose from. So if I wanted a larger grain, I would obviously select the larger grain here and save that. And back in our original document, we have the larger grain going on here, which I think is a bit too large for this graphic, but I could definitely see it being used in other graphics. Let's quickly check out some of the other ones. So we have that diamond grain pattern here, which I really love. I'll show you that. And I'll make it just a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then I'll save this and go back to our template file. And boom, you can see this is a really cool effect. It sort of looks like halftone, but it's like a, I don't know, it's like a nice triangular diamond shaped thing. And I've actually never seen this done. And I think it's a really cool look. So I included it in this template because I want to see people use it. <laughs> I think it looks pretty dope. So definitely try this one out. This is actually one of my favorites and I'll probably use it in an upcoming design of mine. But yeah. Let me check out what the other pattern looks like. So we have this vertical grain here. So I'll save this one. I'll actually make this one a little bit bigger too so we can see it better. All right, I'll save that one. And back in our template file, we have the vertical grain going on here. And this is also a really cool effect. It kind of looks like scan lines on our graphic. You can definitely see this being used across different graphics. And of course, if you wanted to make the lines bigger or even rotate them horizontally to make them look like you know horizontal scan lines, that's an option. Definitely keep this in mind when you're choosing your dither pattern is that you always have the option to open up the pattern fill and change the angle of it and change the scale of it. So I'll just make this really big for emphasizing this point. So when I go back to my document with this saved, it should now be a horizontal scan line and it should be really big. So let's check that out. Right. Look at that. Pretty cool. So definitely keep that in mind when you're choosing your dither pattern. All right. So I went ahead and switched back to the halftone pattern here just for sake of the tutorial. And now let's move on to the third step of Vintone of this framework, which is choosing our colors. So you see in the sample file that I've already done all the coloring for this and you could go ahead and open up this file and peek around and just see how I did it. Um, I'm gonna go through each one of these and just show you or explain a, a few things about how to color your graphic. So let's go to the skin tone over here. That's where I started and I'll open up this color group. 
So just to note real quick, I named all of the color groups in the sample file just, you know, to organize it a bit better. But in the actual template, you'll have a sort of similar setup here. You'll have your color composition and then you'll have all the colors that you could choose from and start painting in. Um, and of course, I, I set it at five colors just as an arbitrary number because, you know, six colors, including the white, of course, is a standard amount of colors to have in a screen print. And I really wouldn't go beyond that. But of course, if you need to, you can duplicate any of these layers and have the, you know, same group or same group format to add colors here, which you'll understand better in, in just a second. So to explain the coloring in most simple terms, you'll go into one of your color layers and you'll open up the buffer group here. And here's where the meat and potatoes of the coloring are. And all you have to do to color your graphic is start painting in the layer mask here where it says paint in mask. So I'm going to reset this layer mask by filling it with black. And you can see now we have no color on this. And to start bringing in color, we're going to take a white brush and start painting in this layer mask with white. And that's going to start painting the color on our image. And of course, we can change that color. All you have to do is open up the layer styles of the color group that you're in. So the color is, is determined by the layer style. So if we open that up, it is a color overlay that controls the colors. So all you have to do is change the color, of course in the color overlay to whatever you want. But one thing you'll notice, and one of the really cool things about this template that I also think is pretty much just one of the main attractions is how it's dithered. So what you'll notice that when you're painting in the color mask, I'm using just a normal soft brush here, but that transparency in the soft brush is being translated into a dither pattern, into the same dither pattern that we use on our artwork. So it's also being dithered live, which is super convenient and actually a really cool effect that I don't think I've seen done before. But yeah, super convenient for preparing your graphic for print and also just gives a cool effect. So you see that I'm painting here with just a normal soft brush around her skin. And just to show you, this is of course the default Photoshop soft brush. But when I paint here, let's say I'll turn the opacity of this brush down to 30. I click the spot here and you can see that it, it interpolates that 30% brush opacity as transparency in the form of our dither pattern. So this is pretty much 30% half toned. And as you can see, if we zoom in, it's all pixel by pixel. There's no transparencies going on here. So this is super easy for color separating out for print. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. You can start painting with your brush using a soft brush or whatever brush you want, really, if you want more of a hard edge. But I feel like the soft brush just works very well for most of the time because you get kind of a nice soft edge here. And if I were to use a, a hard brush, so if I turn the hardness all the way up and I start painting in here, not as pretty of an effect or not as smooth of a transition between the colors and half tones of the graphic. So of course, choose the hardness of the brush at your will, but I would recommend using, you don't have to use a super soft brush. Obviously you don't need the hardness at zero, but a softer brush where the edges aren't so harsh is definitely something I would recommend when coloring in your graphic. And of course you don't have to worry about transparency or anything. So when you're coloring in your graphic, I would highly recommend experimenting actually with transparency. So you could turn the opacity and flow of your brush down so like I did earlier, I'll turn this down to 30. And let's say I want maybe a lighter tone in her hair. So I'll start painting with my brush here. And I'm getting a lighter tone, but I'm still using the same color that I, that I use on her skin. But it's a lighter tone because we're not filling out all of the half tones here. So you see if I zoom in, there's some white left in between these spots because it's being dithered to kind of be controlled at 30% opacity or it's probably not exactly 30%, but you get what I mean. So once again, perfect for screen print because we kind of get a different shade of the color here in her hair when we're painting with a lower opacity, but it's still the same color that we used on her skin. So this is going to be one screen when you send it to screen print, and it's of course saving money. So I'll demonstrate that again with an even lower opacity brush. Let's go to like 20 here. I'm gonna paint in her hair, and we see we're getting sort of a lighter tone. It's kind of hard to see here, I'll zoom in, but we're getting a lighter tone of what we used on the skin tone here. And that of course has massive implications for coloring in our graphic. So just for a quick example, let's say I wanted to give her like sort of an ombre in her hair. Then something I could do is make a new or go to a new color layer, okay? And then I'll just start painting in this layer mask with a softer or a less opaque brush on let's say the bottom of her hair to get sort of a gradient up to the other color in her hair. I'll turn the opacity down a bit so you can see that better. I'm getting a gradient painting over this other color spot with a new color, but now using a different opacity in my brush and of course using a soft brush. 
So when I zoom in here, we're getting sort of a nice, almost like perfectly half tone gradient between the red color here and the peach color here. And this is of course only two colors. So it's kind of akin to a simulated color process when screen printing. But yeah, very cool stuff. And one of the things I want to note as well about the color layers is that they are stackable. So if I'm painting a color here like I did on her hair, then let's say I want to paint, I don't know, her shirt with this blue color here. I'll delete this layer mask and I'll start painting in blue here. We can see that we're kind of covering the other colors that we painted in with this blue, but what if we want to keep those on top? All we have to do is drag this blue color layer or whatever color layer you're using under these other color layers that we want to take precedence over the blue. So I'm actually just gonna drag the red and the skin tone above the blue here. And we can see that the effect that takes on our graphic is now the red and the skin tone take precedence over this blue. So you can stack colors within your color composition and it makes it really easy to color things in. Let's say I wanted to get red over here in her hair without compromising her skin tone. I'm gonna bring this red group under the skin tones and then I'll just start painting in this group. And you'll see no matter how much I go over the skin here, it is not gonna affect the color of the skin because we put that skin layer or the skin color group above this layer. And just look how nice of a gradient that is. And it's all completely dithered. It's pretty sick, pretty cool stuff. And of course, like I said, massive implications for screen printing. One thing I wanna mention lastly is that these colors are of course not going to adhere to your graphic. So if I were to move my graphic around here, I'll go into the artwork folder and I'll just move Stevie around here. The colors are not gonna follow her, but there is a solution for that. And that is to just link the layers so that when you move one, the other moves with it. So I'll select my Stevie group here and I'll also select, we'll hold the control. I'll select the skin tone layer here and I'll select the red hair and the blue groups here. And now I'll just go into, I'll right click on those and I'll click link layers. And now when I move any of these layers, they're all going to move in unison. So if I move the skin tone around, that is also moving the Stevie Nicks folder down here with it. And that is something I highly recommend you do. And make sure you name your color layers here and put them in groups and whatever you need to do to organize so that you don't end up having to recolor the whole graphic. If, I don't know, if your client wants a revision or let's say you finish the graphic and then something's a little off and you want to move it. So definitely link these layers and name them and organize them in a way that is convenient for you so that you don't have to recolor your whole graphic. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you kind of get the whole idea of how the coloring works and how the dithering works and how to composite your artwork. And of course, you can go in the sample file and play around and just see how this whole thing operates. That's pretty much it for this demo. I definitely think this product is going to be a game changer for merchandise designers. And I think it just makes it really easy, streamlines the whole process for creating really cool vintage graphics like these. If you don't have it already and you want your hands on this, of course, you can get it on my website. That is durantsupply.com. I think it's definitely something you're going to want in your toolkit. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.